high school sports came to a halt in the spring of 2020. Last year, they were on and off again, depending on cases of COVID-19. And that was with statewide restrictions to allow those seasons to continue on. Yeah, as for this year, high school sports are up and running again, despite concerns from our medical community. With no sweeping statewide rules, decisions on how to proceed mainly being made at a local level. Tonight, I take a look at all sides to this issue in our 360 report, high school sports and the impact from COVID. I'm not really worried about it. As of right now, uh, no one is testing. That gets a little scary when we get to that point. We're doing everything we can allowable by state law to keep our students safe. There's stress, there's worry, what's gonna happen? In this 360 report, different perspectives on high school sports getting underway despite a surge in COVID-19. I think it's great. I love football. It's good to be at sports. Sloan Childs is a sophomore in Gunnison Valley High School's football team, describing measures that were in place his freshman year. Very hot, cut, very, very hot. Trying to breathe through a mask all the time. So it sounds to me like you're happy not to have to do that this year. Yeah, way happy. Ooh, nice yeah. Job. You learn a lot from football. It doesn't just teach you like plays and stuff. It teaches you how to work hard. Which is why his mom, Wendy, says she loves competitive athletics for her kids. We need it for the kids' sake, for their morale. I mean, that's something that has to be taken into consideration as we move forward to. Acknowledging navigating through this pandemic is new for everybody. But she believes we need to look at this more long term, not just calling things off. I'm not afraid of COVID, but I have a respect for it. I have had many people in my life that have um, gotten sick from COVID and some that have passed away, so I do understand the seriousness of it. On the first day of school for the South San Pete School District, the Central Utah Public Health Department sent out this alert for all parents with information on the virus, encouraging all those eligible, especially of high school age, to get vaccinated. They say nearly 85% of new COVID-19 cases are in individuals who are unvaccinated and unvaccinated Utahns 12 to 18 years of age are nine times more likely to contract COVID compared to those who are vaccinated. It's, it's a little crazy. Rhett Jackson is athletics director at Gunnison Valley High, where they're busy getting ready for a full fall schedule. It's full steam ahead. We're going to try and uh, do everything we can to enable these st student athletes in our state to have these great experiences and to do it with as you know minimal uh, COVID restrictions as possible. A big change from last year's statewide requirements. Many of us were up uh, every other Monday very early, being here at the school at 6 o'clock to do the COVID testing, make sure our student athletes were safe. He says Utah was only one of a few states to take all their sports through to a championship tourney last year and hopes that will be the case again this year, but without the sweeping state restrictions, like limited fan attendance, social distancing, mask wearing, and those regular COVID tests. Let's do everything we can to keep these uh, avenues open for our student athletes. With this Delta variant, it is more infectious in kids. Dr. G.J. Wilden is an emergency room physician at Gunnison Valley Hospital, an independent medical center serving rural communities in central Utah. For a period of time, I think for about three months, I hadn't seen any patients with COVID, and now... I'm seeing one or two or three every day that I'm on. And he says options to treat those becoming more seriously ill are limited. The referral centers, the hospitals that have ICUs, they are getting to the point that they are nearly full. Not necessarily a good time, he says, to be gathering again in crowds or close contact sports. I can't emphasize enough the importance of vaccination. But vaccination rates, particularly in rural Utah, are low. Here in our area, we're about 35 percent. And we really need to get about 75 to 80 percent to get to herd immunity. Across the state, the vaccination rate right now is 50 to 60 percent of those eligible. I just really hope that, that people will go to uh, medical providers that they trust for good information that is so much more reliable. Fans pour into the stands in some of the bigger schools in northern Utah as the 2021 football season kicked off recently. It's fun to feel like it's normal and I just I hope that we get to stay here. But already games have canceled due to COVID. A Davis school spokesman says they're hoping contact tracing will allow them to isolate those affected still allowing teams to play, but it's also up to each individual athlete. We're not testing students, but we tell students, 
if you have the symptoms and they know what those symptoms are, please let us know. Criticized by some for a lack of a statewide solution, the Utah High School Activities Association gave me this statement saying, the UHSAA governing boards are encouraging local schools and local school districts to work with their local health departments in making decisions regarding COVID-19 in their local school communities. <laughs> Allowing high school sports like football to continue. Despite concerns about an increase in the virus's spread for now. Now, after Bountiful Highlands game was forced to call off their season opener last week due to a COVID case in one of their players, this last Friday night, all games, as we understand, went on as scheduled. Local administrators say they will try to proceed week by week with the hope of getting in all games in all sports this school year. For some of the links to the information referenced in my story, just check out this story on our website at fox13now.com.